Australia's diplomatic service is changing and in some ways it's changing quite rapidly. The Lowy Institute has pulled together a list of more than 800 senior diplomatic appointments since 1974. That's pretty much every senior diplomatic appointment made to Australian posts across the world. And it's looking for trends. It's looking for what might have changed, what's shifting inside the diplomatic service and how. There are two trends that are really worth looking at. The first is the very recent and sudden uptick in political appointments. Back in 1974, there were only two political appointments across the whole diplomatic service. That is only two former politicians taking up positions at senior posts across the world. That has basically stayed steady since then for the decades following at around four, five, or perhaps six at most diplomatic appointments across the world. But recently, in the last three years, that's changed and it's changed quite significantly. There are currently 10 people, all former politicians, who are currently sitting in senior posts across the world in Australian missions. The Morrison government has got more of an appetite for this. And it's not just those posts that have traditionally seen political appointees like London and Washington. More recently, Tokyo, New Delhi and Singapore, to name just three, have also had former politicians parachuted in. Labor has been quite critical of this, saying that the Morrison government is intent on turning the diplomatic service into a retirement home for former liberal politicians, basically accusing them of indulging in jobs for the boys. But Alex Oliver from the Lowy Institute says there might also be another reason. In this era of strategic competition with Asia, Asia looming ever larger, it's increasingly important for Australia to make sure that it has cut through in, in places not just like London and Washington, but also like New Delhi and Tokyo. And so it's possible, she argues, that the government is looking for people with political heft who've got cut through back here in Australia, who've got political connections back here in Australia, who will therefore have more credibility in places like Tokyo or New Delhi. On top of that, it's also worth noting the way that there are now more women in the very senior ranks of Australia's service. And that is a very recent change. In 2016, just under 20% of all senior positions, those leading Australian high commissions or posts across the world were women. That figure now is just under 40%. So it's doubled in basically five years. That, according to the Lowy Institute, is a sudden and remarkable shift. And it's clear to see what's driving it. There's been a push within DFAT, particularly from Frances Adamson, the recently departed secretary of DFAT, who was also the first woman to lead the organisation, to make Australia's diplomatic ranks, particularly at the top, resemble Australia's broader population a little bit more. And clearly, at least when it comes to women, that is beginning to pay off. <laughs>